So if you look at the AFC East, Miami before the year was plus 290 to win the division. And now they're plus 140. They're now the favorites. Buffalo, who we're about to talk to, plus 120. They've, they've fallen to plus 145. The mm-hmm. Jets dropped to plus 700 and probably should be dropping even worse than that. And then the Pats were 8 to 1. And they're now 9 to 1 on FanDuel. And yeah, my awesome. reaction coming out of that Monday night game, and this is, I felt bad for Rodgers. I felt bad for the Jets fans. But as a Pats fan, at some point, you start looking at it going, we play them in week three. And that was supposed yeah. to be this really hard game and this gauntlet of the first six weeks. And now, you know, we could be getting Zach Wilson in Foxborough unless the Jets do a miracle thing. I think that Pats 8-1 to one is kind of crazy. Uh, Miami should clearly be the favorite, but I don't know if I trust two either. Now the odds aren't as tasty as they were. And it almost yeah. seems like the Pats are the only like long shot. I'd rather the Pats the long shot odds over any of those other odds. So talk me in. Can you talk me into Buffalo? Is that just a bad game? What did, what did you like? No, I, so I'm not, I'm not pressing the panic button on Buffalo, but it was such a weird game that you can't, you can't move on the Bills right now, even with them below the Dolphins. Um, we talked about this a lot in Extra Point Taken uh, with Shield, where like there, uh, there are games where Josh Allen makes a bunch of knuckleheaded mistakes because he's just trying to be a superhero all the time. And it's like, okay, dude, like you're very talented. Yes, it's very cool. You can throw the ball super far. Like, you got to relax. And then there's games where Aaron Rodgers goes down on the fourth play of the game. And you just as, a, as an individual and as a captain of the team have to decide, hey, we're going to play mistake-free football and right. win a game on the road against a divisional opponent. Like, uh, you're not a trick shot artist. This is not, uh, you're not, you're not, not building out a highlight reel. Ever since that 2021 Chiefs Bills incredible playoff game, like 36 to 42, the Allen Mahomes game, Allen's been playing every game. Like, he's got to do that. And, and I get that it was sick to play in that game and it was an incredible game, one of the best games, whatever, uh, unbelievable quarterback performance. But Allen has to, uh, uh mature. Allen has to, decide that uh, uh, he's going to make decisions for the sake of the team winning, not for the sake of him hitting 50-yard touchdowns. All three of the interceptions that he threw were knucklehead stuff. Just just plain and simple. No, you can't sugarcoat it. It was just stupid, dumb decisions. And and, and to do that in a tight game, Aaron Rodgers and oh, the Chiefs and it's Mahomes, like, okay, like I can at least like wrap my head around it and justify it a little bit. You got to create something. To do it, uh, in this game, where 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 the moment Rodgers goes gets on that cart, you say, okay, we're going to run the football, we're going to control the ball, we're going to generate a lead, we're going to make them throw their way back into this, and we're just going to win this thing. I thought I was I thought it was very disappointing. Uh, but that's like a unique context. That's like a, you know a, in the vacuum of week one. I would not be surprised if in week two Allen walks out and looks like the absolute wood chipper that he's looked like during stretches of the last two years. So I'm on like a wait and see mode with the Bills. I didn't pick them to make the playoffs, and the case for them to make the playoffs was they have Josh Allen, so they're going to go 10 and 7, 11 and 6. When you and Shield did your over-unders and division picks and all that stuff, it was the same case. Shield was like, I he laid out all the things I'm a little worried about, but they have Josh Allen, and that's what we always said. But yeah. if Josh Allen isn't playing at the highest level, I just don't see a lot of talent with them. I don't no. think they're bad, but I don't think they have a lot of impact players, and you could feel it last night. Like Once Rodgers went out, it's like, all right, the Jets are going to run the ball. They're going to be terrified to do anything with Zach Wilson. They were still able to run the ball. Yeah, and I was. You, I, the, I, the, I was surprised by that more than anything. The fact that Sean McDermott takes that defense over from Leslie Frazier says we're going to be more aggressive, and then Aaron Rodgers goes down. Zach Wilson comes in. The only thing the Jets can do now is run the football, and they're they gave up an eighty yard run to Brees Hall like two drives later. <laughs> right. I, I, immediate. That was that was uh, a sirens for me. Yeah, one of the um Well, but even uh, the even the last drive, right? They get the turnover mm-hmm. and you know what they're doing. They're like yeah. they, they the Jets have decided with four minutes left in that game, Zach Wilson's not throwing another pass. We're we're good. We're just gonna run the ball. But they ended up getting a first down, right? And then yeah. the one time they should have thrown it, I think there was two oh four left. And so they they knew they had the two minute coming, right, so the yeah. clock was gonna stop anyway. And it was like the perfect play action time. The Bills had like nine guys on the line. And you have Garrett Wilson by himself over on the left. And it's like, man, if there's ever a time, if Zach Wilson is competent, even 1%, this is the time to throw a pass. But they wouldn't even do that. And no. the Bills still lost. Yeah, it's uh, uh, from 2019 to 2022. The Bills, so it's four over four drafts. The Bills have drafted exactly one Pro Bowler. Uh, that was Dawson Knox. He had one Pro Bowl season in 2022. 
And then they drafted his replacement, Dalton Kincaid, at tight end in the first round of 2023. All along those drafts are defensive players, right? You have a first round on Gregory Rousseau, defensive end, who's like good, but you know, he still needs to take the step and kind of be the impact player. Second round pick on AJ Epinesa. Second round pick on uh, on Boogie Basham, right? You have, uh, uh, they they brought, got Tremaine Edmonds into the building and then they spent a uh, third round pick on, on Terrell Bernard, who's now starting at Mike Linebacker, trying to make him the, 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 the future guy there at Mike. They spent the first round pick on Tyre Elam. It's a healthy scratch, right? They spent a fourth round pick on Jaquan Johnson to be a backup safety. He can't hack it. Now you've got two over 30 year olds and Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde back there. They have been trying to land on young talent to retool the offensive line and then the defense. And they have just missed and missed and missed. They've got like some solid players in and like the Gabe Davis pick was a nice pick. Like Devin Singletary was a good back for a third rounder. He's solid, whatever. But they have not hit on impact players. And that's the issue with the Bills. The cupboard is run bare. And now you're really trying to hold this thing together. Like you said, on, on the merit of Josh Allen's talent on games where he behaves like that. No chance. <laughs> 